Hi and welcome to BehindTheTone.com uh, Today we are going to talk about how, how to bias a tube amp. Uh, but before we do that I want to make a little disclaimer here that tube amps carry very high voltage and even when they're unplugged they still store high voltage in their capacitors and it can kill you. So unless you know what you're doing and you really have done a little research on this um, <clears throat> you can, you should probably stay away from the tube amp and get somebody uh, who knows what they're doing to bias it. But if you do a little research and you, uh, I even have a, a page on my website under the knowledge base that will tell you how to drain the capacitors and also how to just avoid them. If you stay away from them, uh, you should be safe. Uh, one trick I learned from this guy uh, that does a lot of biasing and works on tube amps is when he's biasing he does it with one hand behind his back. He always works with one hand that way he doesn't accidentally grab in there. It's just a trick that he used to, to stay alive. Anyways what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the tube amp and see uh, how to bias the tube amp and save yourself a little bit of money. Uh, what you need first of all is you'll need a bias tester and here this one is by Amphead and this is called a dual bias tester so you can test two tubes at once. They actually even sell a four tuber but two is sufficient. Um, now on the tube amp you will have basically these are the rectifier tubes. Not all amps have the rectifier tubes. Uh, some of them use a just use the silicone diodes as their recti to rectify. Uh, the small tubes, as you can see probably back here, these are your preamp tubes and they never need to be uh, biased. They are set. Uh, if a, if a, if a preamp tube is working, they, they don't lose any power. If they're working, they're working. If they're not, they're not. And sometimes they do mis malfunction and if you, if you have one that's, if your amp is crackling and you, you don't know what's, what's the problem, it could be the power tubes, but it also could be the preamp tubes. And the preamp tubes, let me spin this around for you here. The preamp tubes are the little guys here that um, that uh, they they are they help to make your your you get, help your you get the gain stage of your amp. Uh, this particular Mesa has five preamp tubes. Uh, and like I said, if you think one is malfunctioning, you can just tap on it at, as your amp is on and you should hear either no noise or a clunking noise and that could indicate that you have a bad preamp tube. Sometimes it's just when your map is popping and crackling, it's just guesswork to find out what is going on. Um, power tubes uh, differ from preamp tubes is in that when you, they, they will decrease in power and become... Uh, a little bit lifeless as it goes on. Uh, I often try to keep my power tubes really fresh and uh, change them probably uh, depending on how, how hard you play the amp but maybe once a year I change my power tubes. If you don't use it much it probably lasts longer. If you use it more you probably have to change them more often. Anyways this is where what you have to buy us on an amp is your power tubes. Now in this situation uh, I am using a Mesa Boogie, which usually uh, do not have a bias adjustment. Uh, most amps have a bias adjustment, but Mesa Boogie made their amps on a fixed bias so that you have to only buy their tubes. Well, I personally don't like their tubes, so instead I had my a, a mod done on this where a guy actually put a bias uh, ad uh, adjuster in the amp so I can change tubes and what I'm using is the JJ's and I this uh, nice thing about Mace says you can switch to EL34's or 6L6's so you'll see in this case I have the EL34's so what we're going to do now is we're going to pop out two tubes we'll take just the two inside tubes and we're going to put in our bias uh, our, our bias tester and I'll show you how to hook that up and then uh, we're going to test this. Okay now I've plugged the amp in 
I've turned it on standby, let it warm up for a minute or two, which is good for tube amps. And then I turned the volume down and I kicked on the standby switch. I have my dual tester plugged into two tubes and I have my, uh, my ohm meter set at 200 milliamps. And what we're getting here is a 37 on the one tube. And it varies, 36.9, 37. I'm going to switch my bio tester, and the other tube's getting 36.3. Now, with the, um, the, the, the tester comes a little guide, and it tells you exactly what the reading should be for each kind of tube. What we'll see here on the EL34 is that it goes from 35 to 40. So, I'm pretty safe here. I'm running a little cooler. Some of the uh, guys... Especially, I know, like, Eddie Van Halen runs his tubes very hot uh, to get more grit, you know. And it wears out the tubes. It sounds great, but it wears out the tubes quicker. Uh, since I'm uh, not, a, not a, I'm just a poor guy, I usually run my tubes a little cooler just to preserve the life of them. Uh, you can see I'm running 37, uh, 0.2 on one, and 36.5 on the other. Now what I'm going to do is I will just write that down and then I will t turn the amp off, let those cool down a little bit and I'm going to put the, I'm going to write down exactly what I was getting there and then I will switch it, the, the tester to my next tubes and we'll see what we're getting there. Okay, so I switched the two tubes around. Now we're testing the outside two. And uh, what we're getting here is uh, 35 on our outside tube, 35.6. And we flip it over here, and we're getting a 38.5. So basically, we're in a safe zone. Uh, we're, our other ones were 37 and uh, 36. So uh, we're pretty good here. And um, this like I said, you can run the tubes a little hotter. We could crank it up a little bit. Um, but I feel like this is a good safe zone. It's probably still get a nice tone out of it. But, um, we'll, you know, it's not going to, if you crank it up, you're going to, you know, burn out the tubes quicker. And tubes are expensive. They're about 60 bucks. Uh, but, so, here we don't need to do any adjustments. But what we're going to do is I have a set of, uh, yeah, 6L6s. We'll switch this over to 6L6s and we'll test those and we'll probably end up having to bias it. And then we'll see, I'll show you how to bias it in part two of this, uh, this series, How to Bias Your Amp from BehindTheTone.com. <laughs>